What's up, babies? We got a little bit of a surprise for you today. Yeah, it will a surprise this time regular event moving forward. Yeah, surprise yep. today. Yeah, that will be a not a, Maybe not, not, say, not a surprise. Yeah, gonna, it'd be regular. It'd be cool. It'd be it'd be normal. It's not a it's not a surprise, but it's still it's gonna it's recurring. But it's delightful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It's a su- supplightful. Supplightful. Listen, we are releasing interviews we do as a separate episode. So you guys can get Hockey Talk with us every Wednesday, interviews every Monday. And the first one, if you were following the story, you already know, we were down in Anaheim interviewing East Long Meadows' own Frankie Vitrano. Such a beauty, such an awesome dude. Happy to call him a friend for life now. So we're going to get into this interview for you right now. Enjoy this hang session with Frank Vitrano hanging out at their practice facility in the locker room. Unbelievable stuff, unbelievable guy. You're going to love it just as much as we did. And then, like Chris said, Wednesdays, normal episodes come out. You'll get all the hockey talk and all the buzz. But for now, just sit back, relax, and enjoy this sweet session with Frank Vitrano. All right. Today, (laughs) we drove down to hang out with an East Longmeadow native, UMass alum, U17 silver medalist, U18 gold medalist, former Boston Bruin, Florida Panther, New York Ranger, current Anaheim Duck, the only Duck in franchise history to score a hat trick at the home opener, an NHL all-star, and inexplicably a New England Patriots hater. Wow. Frank Vitrano, welcome to the Internet Podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, <laughs> great introduction. Great. Uh, you know more about me than I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have to read this to you. I'm going to read it to you again because I know you know, but I have to fa- we found this on NHL.com about you right before your Winter Classic game in 2016. Vitrano, who grew up a Boston Bruins fan living outside Springfield, Mass. in East Longmeadow, is expected to get the opportunity to live an experience he never could have dreamed of by playing for his favorite hockey team at Gillette Stadium, home of his favorite football team in the 2016 Bridgestone NHL Winter Classic. That is a lie. Fake news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you even remember doing that interview? No, I don't. I just remember just obviously playing the Winter Classic was unbelievable. Yeah. Playing at Gillette, like seeing playing yeah. in front of that many people, but not a not a NFL fan at all. Yeah. Nope. Uh, play I mean, fantasy, and the only reason I watch some games is to watch how my players are doing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason to do it, honestly. Well, you know what? I actually think it was cool payback because when you were playing for the Bees and you felt like people were just cheering for the Pats highlights and the Jumbotron, you got to go into their house and get everyone to cheer for the Bruins. So, exactly. yeah, it kind of worked out. Yeah, for sure. It's a great move. Um, before we jump into all the NHL stuff, I want to talk about the Vans. Tell people oh, yeah. what's Tell going on that. here. Yeah, so uh, we, Vans is based in uh, Anaheim. The headquarters are here, so they do a good job at giving us shoes and kind of creating um, – last year they let me and a few of the guys go in and create our own shoe and kind of see what they do behind the scenes and how much detail actually goes into the shoe and – how many different shades of white, how many different laces, what your eyelets would be. It's, it's crazy. It's kind of endless. And uh, on Sunday, uh, we're kind of modeling them off. There's two different pairs that we're wearing. And uh, there's a black pair, yellow, and uh, the kind of the vintage ducks color and yeah. uh, all orange pairs. So uh, hopefully fans can get their hands on those before they sell out. Yeah, yeah going quick. I got, I got to scoop the vintage one. Do you remember what your custom one looked like? Obviously, I am. My custom, so I'm more... I, I'm black, gray, white. I wear all neutral colors. I yeah. Okay. Expand out. So we did uh, these mid tops. They were uh, white, black, a little bit of gray, and like suede. They're they're pretty cool. Um, we put the District Five logo on there. Oh uh, from, fuck from, yeah! Uh, <laughs> Damn. From, uh, the OG Ducks movie. Yeah. Hell yeah. Ducks That's and, uh, sick. We got our numbers on there. So yeah, that was pretty cool to do all that stuff. That That's epic. money. Yeah. I love it. Um, okay. I want to get into college hockey. Because we're big hockey East guys. You went to UMass, obviously. We're all from the New England area. But you have a bit of a tumultuous college career that I don't think a lot of people know about. So I want to hear about it. Because you committed to BC, which was your dream school when you were younger. Then a wild situation happens that I'd love to ask you about. <laughs> yeah. But then you go to UMass. Then you can't even really play for a couple of years. So what the hell happened? What was the deal there? Yeah. Not many people know the whole true story of what happened. I mean, people even forget that I was committed to BC. I know. Yeah. Like, yeah. But Early, dude. Like yeah, sophomore. I, I committed yeah. to BC in October of my sophomore year. Um, I remember I narrowed it down. I went to go visit BU and BC. I always wanted to go to BU. Um, and then my parents were like, just go see BC in the next following weekend. And yeah. Decision from there. And then went to BC. I fell in love with it. I, my cousin played there. He won two yep. national championships. So there's a connection there. And, Huge. Um, what, what campus or like what coach? I like the campus uh, yeah. feel. Um, okay. Yeah. BU is kind of in the city. It's yep. right in the heart of it. And 
I just like the campus feel and Bean you know, doesn't really feel like it has a campus, right? It's no, like, it's, it's just, just like calm out. Oh no, yeah, exactly. it's, it's all spread out. Yeah, no, yeah. Chestnut I Hill, just, you living in the mods, exactly. dude, you're chilling. Yeah. DC was great, and I loved it there. So yeah, I committed there at 16, and I uh, went to the National Development Program for two years, and I wasn't the best student in high school. So uh, obviously, with college and NCAA and clearinghouse, if your GPA is low, there's a sliding scale with your test scores yeah. in school. So. The first time I took my ACT, I had a 2.1 in G- GPA. In yeah. so Hell not yeah. Great. Hey, so not D great. stands for degree, yeah. which guys. is good enough. <laughs> I think like the I think like you have to have over a 2.0 like yeah. GPA okay. to go to pass. Yeah, yeah. So I needed to score really high on my ACT scores. So I took the ACT the first time. I got like a 14 on. It. I think you get like a 13 for signing your name. Yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, BC obviously knew about my grades uh, in my senior year, and they're oh. like, "Yeah, look, like those test scores you got aren't going to be good enough to get you through clearinghouse, so you're going to have to take a, another test." Yep. Took another test, my scores jumped to a 24. Hell yeah! So I called BC. I was like, "Hey." Um, and wait, so but you didn't take the SAT; you took the ACT. I'm getting there. Okay, okay, I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I took the ACT. And I got a 24. I called BC. Like, hey, like I got a 24 my ACT. I think that scores are good enough to get me to school. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's great. But because of the significant jump in your scores, like the NCAA, not the NCAA, the ACT might question your scores. But if you don't hear anything, we're just good. we're good to go. Like, congratulations, you're accepted. Yeah. Uh, then it's I think you there's like a cutoff day. I think it's like May something. There's a cutoff day for your uh, to sign your NLI. Yeah, yeah. So this was like. Yeah. May fit. This is before I even knew the rule, but it was like mid-May at this point. <laughs> ACT questions my scores. Oh, oh so I write God. back a letter. They're like, you can either sign up and take a test in front of someone, or you can write a letter saying why you did good, why you did better. Yeah. So I wrote a letter. You're like, you're like, yeah, I'll take the letter. Thank I wrote you. a letter <laughs> back to them saying why I did better. This is I studied this, this, this. They denied it. So I was at the point where like I have to take the next available test. So I take the AC, uh, SAT. Yep. BC knows the whole situation was going yep. on. You guys knew this was going to happen. So I called them. I'm like, hey, I, I took the uh, SAT. I got a 1550. Uh, what do I do? He's like, those scores are good enough to get into school. Like, we'll see you in October. Yep. So nothing goes by all summer working out and skating. I get to school in September, and uh, I remember I was doing classes, doing, did, you know, rookie initiation, all this stuff. Yeah, like you're practicing with the boys. With the boys. You know, yeah, yeah. Feeling comfortable at the school. And I got called off the ice one day, and, you know, what happened with your ACT scores? I was like, I told you guys yeah, about yeah. this in May, about, you know, the significant jump. And I was like, okay, no problem. Another day goes by. I get called by my uh, coach there. Um, he's like, so did um, – what happened on your ACT scores? Yeah. I was like, well, I just did better. He's like, no, I know you cheated. I was like, I didn't cheat. He's like, you cheated in a few sections. He's like, if you come forward and say you cheated, wow. like, we'll get you out of it. I was like, okay, I cheated on a, on a couple sections. All right, like, okay. Wait, no. wait, did you? Or oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I cheated. I cheated on the ACT. I didn't on the SAT. ACT, I did. Yeah. yeah. And I was a young kid at the time. Stupid mistake, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? But, yeah, so... In order for that, so like I said before, like my ACT and all those scores, those scores were in too late. So my plan was to redshirt at BC for the year, which sucked, okay. but I was like, that's fine. But fine, I'll yeah. Yeah, you're in. I'll be able like, to practice the team. But in order to do that, NCAA was on board with it. BC admission, I had to go through BC admissions again. And okay. Tell them what happened. So I was in a meeting. It was me and Jerry York. Just right. won a national chair at school. Has Jesus more Christ, pull yeah. than anyone at yep. the school. I go in the meeting. It's like 8 a.m. I go into the meeting and, you know, I kind of state my case, like, Yep. I wasn't even there for more than five minutes, and before I could even get fifteen words out, the guy was like, "You can't, uh, you can't stay at this school." And I was like, "Wow, Jesus, dude. that's it." I went back to my dorm room. I packed my dorm room in an hour, and thank God my cousin was in Boston at the time. Yeah, wow. Picked me up, went home, and kind of sorted things out. And then, in, um, so my transfer penalty was starting right away. So right. I had to get a new school by January. Holy uh, so shit! So this happened in October yep. to start my transfer penalty. So that was in. 2012 13 yep. that was my uh, freshman year so i transferred into uh, umass january of 2013 and then i still had to go to the ncaa because they were hit me with there's a transfer penalty yep so i was and then they hit me with the cheating penalty so i got a year and a half suspension from the ncaa God. so i sat out 2012 13 i practiced with umass yep. 13 14 sat out that whole year and then the following year 14 15 i played one year left and signed <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude oh my i didn't play so. hockey for two years yeah, yeah. obviously Everything has worked out wonderfully. Yep. How wrecked were you when that happened? Like when you were yeah. packing up that dorm room at BC, were you like, I, my life's over? Or were you? I look, I think back to that time in my life and I was just, you're so naive. You're 18 yeah. years old. You were like, I'm going to play in the NHL. Like you're yeah. just like, I'm going to play hockey. Yeah. Like, uh, it doesn't really, you know, I'd never really thought about like, holy shit, this is a huge deal. Like I'm not playing hockey for two years. Like who knows how I'm going to be in two years when yeah. I play. Yeah. And I never thought that way. I mean, now, if I think about it now, that gives me so much anxiety. To think Terrifying. About, to know now, all that stuff yeah. that happens. But like I said, like, you know, I've n- 
you know, I have no bad blood with BC. Like mm-hmm. everything happens yeah. for a reason. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have a great support system with my family and everyone who helped me get through it. And, for real. You know, a UMass was great for me. Um, you know, I got to go there and, and play big minutes right yeah. away. And Boston, you know, I give Boston so much credit for taking the chance on me and yeah, yeah. to sign me. And, you know, like you said, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, for sure. God, unbelievable. Dude, that is like, it's what honestly, a story. again, it's one of those things where, I love being able to smile about it because things have worked out so well because of your resiliency, your hard work, your family, all the stuff like that. But it, I was like, my heart's beating yeah, out of my yeah, chest because yeah. I'm with you. Like thinking about it at our age now, it's like that is the most anxiety inducing thing yeah. I could possibly think of. Of And then you're right. It's like when you're at UMass and you're not even getting to play still, oh, like you must dude, have been like, torture. what the fuck yeah, is going on? Yeah, just practicing and doing all that stuff and... You know, you're practicing hard all week, especially in college, like practices aren't easy and you're doing oh. all that work for nothing really. But I was so fortunate enough to be so close to home too. Yeah, like, true. Is 30 minutes for me. So when the guys would go on the road on the weekend, I would just go home and hang yeah. out with my friends. And yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's what made it Helped very big easy time. for me. Yeah, for sure. Jesus. Uh, so then, like you just said, you insane rise, right? So like you're, you have one year, get the offer from Boston, decide to leave, which I imagine wasn't, well, it's probably a reasonably easy decision, but yeah, you know, I always, like, cause you know, going back to like the, even the NHL draft, like I was ranked 88th in yeah. the final central scouting and like, you know, interview with 15 teams and, um, thought I was gonna be drafted. I didn't care what I was drafted. I just wanted to get drafted. Yep. And, um, you know, I thought I was going to get picked and I didn't. And that's on me too. I wasn't really a guy that was in great shape. And I think that mm-hmm. really, I always had the tools and all that stuff, but I wasn't really taking care of myself off the yeah. ice with fitness and whatnot. And I didn't take too it much serious. pizza. So, uh, obviously once that happened and I got to school, you have to take that stuff, especially in Boston. Oh my because, God. You know, they teach you how to be a pro on off the ice. And if you're not to their standard, you're, you'll never play. So, you know, that's a perfect team for me to sign to because they taught me, you know, what you have to do in order to play in this league. For yeah. Sure. yeah. So yeah. So you sign there, light up the AHL, immediately get called up. I think it is, you'll know better than me, but it was like 13 months from your first NCAA goal to your first NHL goal, yeah. which is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. But so I tell, tell us a little bit about just what that felt like, how quick that all happened. And specifically, I want to, I want you to tell our listeners the story of uh, your dad and your mom's brother-in-law when you call them like, Hey, I'm playing in Montreal oh, that's and great. they get, they go to cross the border. It's actually yeah. funny. I never even thought of my dad was like, I think we did a little segment during the winter class. I got the pizza. My dad has all, he likes collecting all the pucks. So yeah. I think in one calendar year, I have my first college goal, my first AHL goal and my first NHL yeah. goal. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Which is crazy to think. <laughs> so you're probably the only and, person on earth that has that. I'll exactly. never forget the call. Flash from that BC dorm room to that. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, I'll never, crazy. I'll never forget when I got the call, because I remember we just did our body fat in Boston, <laughs> uh, in Providence. They would come down and body fat yep. test us once a month. And me and a few of the boys were at the Providence Place Mall getting Chinese takeout food because <laughs> we were spoiling ourselves. Yeah. And I got a call from Bruce Cassidy. be like, hey, uh, you're called up. You're going to play in Montreal. Be ready to play. It's a fast building. Yeah. And I remember I called my parents right away. And uh, my dad was like, I'm going. Yeah. You know, Uncle Barry, you're going. I was like, we don't have passports, but we'll find our way through the border. And they got through the border without passports. I don't even know if they have birth certificates, but you know, I remember my dad was talking to the, you know, the guy at the, at the, at the border and was like, looked up my name, was like, oh, your son, twelve goals, twelve games, AHL, playing against Montreal tonight, huh? He goes and just let him go on through. Isn't that epic? Of course, the Montreal border guard is like, yeah. oh, Frankie, twelve if, goals. If, if there's any border that you know is going to be dialed in in the AHL stats, it's Montreal. Yep. So, so that's sick. a huge win yeah. for Dad. It's great. <laughs> God, I love that and so then, much. And then I saw he said, because uh, you score, you know, yeah. right away. And then he forgot to turn the international plan on his phone and got popped oh, yeah, with he got $600, played with like $600 probing right charges. The, he was, he was, it was <laughs> funny because uh, the Ritz in, uh, uh, where we stay in Montreal is unbelievable. I'll tell you, he had the robes on yeah. and all yeah. that stuff and just really enjoying the perks of being in the NHL. Yeah, he yeah. remembered everything except the fucking international plan. Yeah. Greg, Come on. Exactly. <laughs> when you look at that, you know, that whirlwind of that year, like you said, that calendar year of those three, you know, huge milestone goals, were you able to process it yeah. at all? Or were, did you just feel drunk the whole time where you're like, Jesus Christ, like I'm doing this. Now I'm doing that. Now I'm in the NHL. I the think ultimate you're kind goal. of just in the, you're in the moment, right? Yeah. I think when I retire and I'm done playing and kind of think of all this stuff, I think you can really enjoy it a lot more when you're retired. But when you're in it, you're in it. Yep. And yeah. you, you can't really sit back and relax and think about things. You kind of can For sure. focus on that stuff when everything's done. But no, definitely a cool story to tell people. 100%. I mean, it must have been insane being in Montreal your first game with a tuck. You can't like, draw like, it You must up. have been like, dude. You can't draw it up in there because I was a Bruins fan growing up. So yes. I remember yes. 
you know, back in, you know, two thousands when Montreal owned Boston, the playoffs, mm-hmm. I, my heart would be broken every single yep. year. And, um, you know, in order to, it was cool too, cause it was the pre winter classic game. So we were all wearing toques and warm ups, and oh, wow. it was a really cool experience. Yeah. It's amazing. So we're on the topic of milestones this year. You get named as an all-star unbelievable moment. And I feel like with you, I want to hear about the whole experience in Toronto. We were there as well. Cool stuff going on everywhere, but how cool was it for you finding out from, you know, come off the ice, I think at practice, right? And Rebecca's here with Ophelia with the onesie on that says you're an all-star. Did you know, was that like a true surprise? Yeah. I mean, I had no idea because I don't know how the, the picks go for the NHL. Yeah. We had young guys in this room and guys in this room for who sure. were more Definitely. deserving to be there. And, you know, I don't know how they do it, how they pick. I don't know. Sometimes they don't base it off of stats and all that yeah. stuff, but I didn't even know when they were picking the team, to be honest with you. And then obviously when I walked in the room and, and saw my baby did you read it right wife. away or were you just like no, oh, I, I just saw she had some ducks on and i was like why would my wife and baby be here yeah, yeah. did you put it together I mean? or I were you like together <laughs> uh, no but that was awesome and just uh for them to tell me she's been there since day one supporting me and hell yeah you no know, it's obviously awesome now we have a, a baby and to enjoy it with her obviously she's she won't remember but she'll be able to have some uh memorabilia and some cool sweatshirts she got made for her and the pictures but just enjoy that whole that whole weekend was for my family like i wanted to spend as much time with them with my best buddies my best buddies all drove down and got an airbnb and you know th- there's my huge support system too and like my from home were, yeah buddy wow that's yeah awesome. my all my brothers were there my, one of my brothers could make he just had a baby but everyone who was there since day one my whole life who supported me were that's there unbelievable to enjoy man. It, so it was great that's awesome man it, yeah obviously your first all-star game the mecca of hockey in toronto were there any highlight memories? Even if it was just stuff like, you know, with, with the, the core crew going to dinners or stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, just going to dinner with friends and family was awesome. And just kind of seeing everyone like, you, you know, we're hanging out at the hotel and Wayne Gretzky's in there yeah. having drinks with his family and his buddies. And, yeah. you know, I think being in Toronto, it brought everyone close together and everyone that's part of the NHL, alumni, guys who are playing, obviously were there. Everyone was involved with one another. And I think the way they did the celebrity coaches was cool. And meeting Justin Bieber, who I loved growing up and <laughs> yeah, still love to this day. And, for sure. You know, I got to take pictures of him and talk to him a bit. That was that was really cool. We, uh, I really love this question. We, we're good buddies with Sway on the Bruins. Yeah. And I always think it's such a cool element when you guys get together like that with all the other players from other teams. It kind of goes back to that, the travel days and, you know, camp days when you're with a bunch of different guys was there anyone that you played with that you hadn't played with before whether it be at the national program or other teams that you're like oh really cool guy like fun to get on the ice with them so i played against kucherov when in florida i think i played oh yeah crazy times. yeah, yeah. Three season right and then we were just in the room and i talked to him for like 20 minutes we were just talking hockey and yeah obviously i don't know him very well he's yeah. the best player in the league so you know, i would just chat with him for 20 minutes but super nice guy and just t- kind of just talking about hockey and it, it was uh it was great but i got the chance to play with him and it makes the game easy yeah yeah for what sure you think about his skills comp performance <laughs> i loved it <laughs> that was the, that level of output he was the villain in toronto yeah. i mean i i wish he scored on that uh, me too dude in the shootout, shootout. that would have been great me god, too. We were saying the same thing because yeah. he was like waving before he even went yeah, i was like it was Please great he's tuck this oh, my awesome. god dude you had i mean you had uh, you had a great we could go to the tape the mvp of that game was that was that was rigged yeah (laughs) but um we obviously you know we love you and when you got that first tuck that absolute cheese bar southie was unbelievable like you know like i know it's the all-star game and you guys aren't buzzing around that hard but when you get that puck in your stick in that situation, you're like, I'm getting an all You want to get one, right? You got to score. Yeah, yeah exactly. Score. Okay, exactly. Yeah. It's not like the goalie's trying to let me score. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'm to score. Exactly. Right? But yeah, no, uh, that felt good for sure. You no. want to go with it. If you you're got going it. all the way there, you got to at least get something. Dude, I screamed. That was a fun. Yeah, we, were, we were like in this suite with like our NHL credentials with a bunch of people. You're supposed to be, you know, you're not supposed Formal to be biased. Yeah. I, I literally squealed. <laughs> like yeah. this. Oh. I was like, oh, Frank. And then it was the most Missile. unbelievable shot I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking awesome. Okay. I want to ask you about um, some work ethic questions. So mm. we read that, you know, you had, you said that you spend a ton of time in the gym in the off season. You love, you feel like you can relax there. And you've really had the same program your whole, since you turned pro, you know, I've been doing the same thing and i also know I, I think most people know that that love you um your family's got the pizza place antonio's and very famously you're the only only brother that never worked there but just watching what your family did putting in the work to get what they want and instilling that in you and thinking about your journey going back to 
fucking playing goalie street hockey with the brothers, you know, to the college thing to here now. And, and I know you were that band off in the prove people wrong band. So I'll stop there. Just talk to us about the people in your life growing up, watching the work ethic that they had that made you, you know, the guy and the player you are today. You know, I always say if it wasn't for that restaurant, I wouldn't have been able to put through hockey. Uh, I was so fortunate, you know, where I lived, grew up, the hockey wasn't the best with development. And so, you know, I had to drive an hour. I, I played in Marlboro. I played for the Minimum Flames my yeah. whole life. And so, you know, I was fortunate enough that my parents owned their own business and, you know, worked on top of me playing hockey. And they were able to take time out of their day to drive me an hour to practice every day and an hour plus for games. So, you know, the little hole in the wall pizza shop provided for me and my brothers our whole yeah. lives. And, you know, to this day, they still work very, very hard. They're in there every single day. And my dad always says when, you know, the owner's not there, that's when things aren't running smoothly. So yep. mm -hmm. he's always there as much as possible. And, you know, just work ethics, everything. I think you got to like even my dad didn't start the business, but that shop, he had to earn everything to get it from his dad and to see that he was, you know, fortunate enough to take take that over from him and grow it to what it is today. So, um, you know, like I said, I never worked there. I worked there for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. My dad fired me. What so, were you doing? Uh, you are sweeping or what did you do? My dad told me to pick up the phone. phone. <laughs> I said no. And then he told me to sweep the parking lot. I said no. And then yeah. my mom gave me 20 bucks and I left. <laughs> I mean, honestly, good thing you were bad. Good thing you didn't want to sleep the parking lot. You wouldn't be sitting here right now. Yeah, you know, exactly. you'd still be there. Exactly. Yeah, that's so good. You got paid for the day. That's good. Yeah, yeah not that. Yeah, not that. I used to go there when I wanted a, when I wanted twenty bucks. So yeah, yeah right. Eat, eat a piece of pizza and get a twenty. Um, <laughs> thank God hockey worked out, man. Well, no. Did uh, how come how come goalie didn't work out? Your brothers just cheesing you all day, or, or I love goalie because you're always in the action. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, true. I always I always mess around with Gibbs. Was like, hey, Gib, you want to put my gear on today? I want to put I want to play goalie. Yeah, but uh, no, I I just love. I was always young, so they always needed a goalie. So I just wanted to be with the older guys. That's how you got. That's how you, that's fit, how you fit in. Yeah. Right? So um, no, I loved it. You're always in on the action. Yeah. No. You have the outcome of the game in your hands. It's very yes, true. Yes. Damn straight. I like that. Any hockey, I was always the goalie because you had the. If you weren't playing well. Yep. You weren't winning. Yeah. And then, and then tell us quick about you know what's the off season workout program looking like. Yeah. So I I work out. Actually, I probably I skate and work out a lot. So I'm I'm usually Monday through Sunday. Oh I, damn! I don't so every really day. try and take a day off. <laughs> yeah, like I should probably try and take a day off, but I have so much anxiety with me not doing enough. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm I'm in the weight room for an hour. I'm in the weight room Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Okay. And uh, I skate Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then uh, usually Wednesdays, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I go. I I I got into running since early on in my career. Really. So I try to run at least 50 miles a week. And, oh, Christ, you know, they're going to say a day. I, I, like I was like, dude. <laughs> Same. I was like, Jesus, dude, but calm down. miles minimum and then just try and total up the miles. How are the knees, dude? Good. You sure? Knock I don't wood. Know. Yeah, These are Christ. good. These are good. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, I've seen it translate on the ice, just feeling Definitely. good uh, with the wind and stuff. So I keep doing it. Yeah, whatever yeah. works. Yeah, whatever works. Yeah. Try and stick with it. So taking that work ethic to this year, obviously <laughs> you're having an unbelievable season with the Ducks. And what is it, you know, how have you kind of taken all those lessons that you have with a team like this that's so young, with all these young guys that have been, you know, high draft picks, guys that are really proving themselves and looking to you as an example? Because I, I thought it's pretty interesting, you know, your whole saga to get here has been so fascinating, so fun to watch. And now seeing you, a guy that, you know, we've loved watching to play, really fighting for your ice time a lot in your NHL career to start, now being a really seasoned veteran on this team with a lot of young guys. What is that like for you? I think the great thing about, you know, Anaheim, the young guys is that no one, no young guys feel entitled because that's how sometimes mm. in this league, some young guys feel they're entitled to certain opportunities and guys on our team aren't like that at all. These young guys want to work every single day and it makes it easy for us older guys to, you know, go to work with these guys every day and, you know, they're, they're open-minded. They want to learn too, and then we can learn from them. So whether we're doing yeah, some cool. skill stuff with them on the ice before practice, they do in the summer, like we're, they're open-minded to anything, which yeah. is great. Especially with the younger guys. Some guy, young guys think they have it all figured out, but you find out real quick that this league is not easy. Yeah. And yeah. There's ways to always make yourself better. You always have to get better at the things you do great, but you also have to work on your weaknesses as well. So if For you sure. can master your strengths and then you work on your weaknesses, you're going to be a great player. And yeah. I think that's what our young guys are, are good at doing. So um, they've been great. And, you know, we try the best we can to help those guys out every single day. Is it weird being like one of the big veterans on a team? Because like you're still young. I know. Yeah, 29. <laughs> well, so yeah. some people think that's old, but I yeah. think that's still pretty young. It's I got a lot young. of years left in me. But no. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy to think that, you know, from 
how my career started that I, you know close it I'll probably close it on 600 games next year and that's, dude it's crazy to think fucking of wild. And, uh, you know it's been a fun journey I want to play this game as long as possible yeah oh thousands in our sights babe I, yeah. I, I couldn't believe that though I heard you in an interview the other day say you were over 500 and I was like my god because I mean well obviously Bees fans I feel like I was yeah. just watching you and you're yeah, kid, I think I but played I was like, maybe a hundred and something in Boston and then you know played the bulk of my games in Florida yeah uh, well, I'm glad. I mean, it's cool to hear you say you're learning from each other. I like yeah. that a lot. I, mm -hmm. I picture, you know, Z setting up Michigan drills at practice. He's like, all right, boys, here's how you, here's how you wrap this yeah, puck he's got around. those little good drills, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, just passing and tight. Like, he has a lot of him, and uh, he works with Adam Oates, so they have a lot of those yeah. good, little uh, hockey drills that we do sometimes before yeah. practice. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, well, the <clears throat> crazy time in the NHL calendar, obviously, trade deadline this week. Um, you've been traded twice in your career for a third rounder and a fourth rounder. I can't open Twitter now. Without your name for Price for Frank with Toronto's Fine, six like, first round picks. Everybody needs the high scoring winger. The Rags want you back. The Islanders, the Red Wings. And seriously, every team. Every I swear to God, every team's rumored to you. So, first of all, must be super flattering because you're like, God, all you're the buzzing. hard work I'm putting in is, is really paying off. But I, I also know that you just, you know, you control what you can control. But tell us a little bit about what it's just like being an NHL player waking up every day on the internet, hearing your name flying around this time of year. Yeah, I mean, I try and stay away from it. I usually try and stay away from Twitter and all that stuff yeah, good. Uh, during the year. Um, but like you said, you, you don't really control that. But, you know, it's crazy to think of, like, your whole life can be upended in one phone call where you have to move your family to another place. But, you know, I don't really worry about that. I, I'm in Anaheim now. I want to be here a long time. I want to be part of the solution here. I want to help these young guys grow. And, you know, uh, I'm comfortable here. This is a second home, and yeah. you know, I love to stay here for as many years as possible. Yeah, Absolutely. and tell us, like you were saying before, how, because we feel it too, it feels like this squad is so, right right on the doorstep, yeah. you know, year or two away. I think we're so close. We have all of our younger guys in the lineup and playing their first years pro, and it's not easy to ask, you know, 18, 19 year olds to play 80 games in a regular season. And yeah. To try and have, you're going to have growing pains, and, you know, we've been hit with the injury bug this year too, and we haven't really had a healthy lineup all year. And it's always the top six guy that's going down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you got to play without those guys and try to find ways to score goals. And, but when we have a full lineup and our young guys have another year under them, I think we're going to be a great team. Get, we walking around this locker room we, just before you got here, we're just looking at the names. I'm like, this team is going to be stacked. It's yeah. unbelievable. You can feel it, too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's exciting. Cool, you know, us being in California, there's a great buzz of Ducks, Ducks fans, and you can see the future's bright. And speaking of the future and the young guys on the team, we saw recently you said that Troy Terry is your favorite Duck, past or present. And I gotta know why. <laughs> and I wanna, I wanna be on record. Us, uh, you know, Ducks team over here, Sammy. We were talking earlier. Troy is so funny, funny guy. And I don't think yeah. a lot of people know it. So I want to know some funny Troy stories you have. Yeah, he's got to be why a such a big honestly fan. Honestly, so many stories about him that you could just go on and on about. I could probably be here for another couple hours. Yeah. But yeah. he gets probably the most shit out of anyone on the team. <laughs> From the it's boys. Him buying a house or if it's something to do with hockey or something to do with treatment or something to do with his wife. He just he just does he hears it nonstop and he's so good at taking it. And then he has like the old man jokes that like if he gets the guys going on it, he'll say it like four or five more times. But yeah, I love that. He's just aw he's so fun to be around because he can take it and he gives it back and he's just he's just a joy to be around i feel like he does have really good self-deprecating humor like and he's, he's an unbelievable <laughs> hockey player too yeah. so that's yeah, that what makes it and if you watch him walk around you're like this guy scores 80 points a year yeah. you're like no way yeah yeah but he just the stuff he does on the ice you can't teach he's so skilled and he just the way he sees the game like you just can't teach that kind of stuff. yeah that's kind of is skill. he the funniest guy in the room eh. I like me and Stromer up there somewhere. Yeah, oh, yeah, you, there two, you, go. you two are a <laughs> dynamic duo, dude. My God. Yeah, that is very true. Yeah. God, okay. I love it. So uh, now we're going to, before we let you go, we're going to play a game. We play with everybody. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen it. We call it pass, shoot, score. It's a ranking system. So we pick categories of stuff you like, and then going to give you three. You rank them pass, shoot, score. Pass is your least favorite because, I mean, getting yeah. assist is cool, but yeah. trying to light the lamp. Shoot is your next favorite because puck's on net, baby. Score yeah. is your favorite. Okay? Your can first. I only use one category for each, or can I do... You're, yo, no, so I'm going to give you, I'll give you a category, give you three things, and then you've yeah. got to pick okay. pass, gotcha. shoot, score for those basically, three things. I got you. It's basically fuck, marry, kill. Yeah. It's not very gotcha. complicated. Yep. Gotcha. But you don't have to kill anything. All right. <laughs> okay. Your first category is music. All right? Three songs. Number one, The Stroke by Billy Squire. Score. Hold Ooh, on. Ooh. Hold confident. on. Confident. That's my goal song. I know. <laughs> number two, Shallow by Jackson Maine. And number three, Last Night by Morgan Wallen. I would say... Shallow, you're talking about the one from the oh, stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure am. That's a score. That's me and Nolachari's karaoke score. Okay, so you just you Which went to you quit. Only then. one of them can I be can score. Only do one. Yeah. one of them has to be score. Yeah, one has to be yeah, you have to rank. That's why it's tough. I would say score for the stroke. Okay. Shoot 
for shallow. Shallow. Okay. And then last night would be pass. Yeah. Okay. You country guy? I am. Country I heard guy, you, you yeah. like Morgan Wall. Right? I like Zach Bryan a lot more now. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's Interesting. good. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Have you been to Country Fest at Gillette? I have not. I've been to all the other concerts at like uh, Don't Xfinity go. and stuff. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's, 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 it's an absolute absolute nightmare. Don't go because usually they have the like, obviously Country Fest. They don't have it at Xfinity and Hartford. But yeah. Usually, like I remember back in the day, like Luke Bryan, all of them, Jason yep. Aldean. I went to all those concerts. Yeah, that was really cool. We actually went to uh, Morgan Wallen last year at Staples Center, so that was awesome. oh incredible. We were yeah. going to try and go to Zach Bryan uh, at, at Petco Park, but it was the day before games. So we Petco sick, by the way, awesome. too. Yeah. Okay, um, wait, hold on. Do you uh, do you love Stars Born? <laughs> how, how, how did you land it's on Shallow? It's a great soundtrack. <laughs> it is such a good It's just a great movie. karaoke yeah. song, Sad too. movie, too. Sad. But it's a great movie, who, yep. great soundtrack. Who does the Lady Gaga part in the karaoke when you guys do it together? I think I did it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, we did it at Rookie Party in Dallas when we were locked down during COVID. So Yeah, I love it was, that. It was, a good, it was a good, I wish we got it on video. Pretty Stepped sick. up to the plate. I yeah, love yeah, I love that. All right, next one's gifts, whether it be for yourself or from other people. So here's your pass shoot score. The Rolex from Bob, plus McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> the 2016 Jeep Wrangler, or the Balenciaga slides. Ooh. And I need to know if you got them. I, I don't, they're, not, they're not with me. I should have worn them. No, no, but you did get them I eventually. Get them. Okay, 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 good, okay, good. good. Remember, Sammy? Are those? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah the orange. I got ones. Them. Was that Rebecca? Did, yeah. did did she step up to the plate and get them for you? Well, I told. I actually, I told her I wanted them before we saw them at the store, so I had to give a nice. Yeah, but I had. I opened them up on Christmas. Okay, yeah, I, there you go. Go. All yeah. Right. All right. I'm going to say the Rolex score for sure in the McDonald's. Okay. Yep. I'm going to say shoot for the Balenciaga slides. Okay. Nice. And then pass on the 216. Yep. Do you have the Wrangler still? No. Okay. But you don't have cars. I try and switch them out. I switch them out more than I should. So. <laughs> That's all right. That's yeah. all right. Uh, I don't, hey. I, I don't want to put you on blast, but you, I want to know what you're driving later when we're done recording. Sounds good. Yeah. Because hey, uh, I imagine it'll be gone in like two months. No, I'm in a lease, so I can't break it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I lease cars now, because you can't break yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Keep you your honest. Hand. I, like it. I like it. But listen, that was, your first, that was the first gift yourself after your first contract, yeah. right? So, what yeah. color? Yeah. White with black rims. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. Just standard. Yeah, yeah. no, that's just solid, though. In that's Boston, solid. just get dirty as hell yeah. in yeah. Boston exactly. winter. Perfect decision, <laughs> white yeah. car. Okay, next category. Antonio's menu items. Pass shoot score, buff chick grinder, a custom slice of your choosing, or the cheeseburger grinder? Ooh, score on the uh, custom slice. Wow. Slice. Okay. Well, and what is it? I just get pepperoni. There's oh, nothing better. Man. I like slices better than actual pizzas. It's oh my, yep. it's way better. It's yep. way, way better. better. Um, I would say shoot on the cheeseburger grinder because that's like actually like their most popular. Yeah. On the menu. Okay. Cheeseburger subs a very New England thing, by the way. Like this, I can't get that. I thought my dad's like, I don't know why this is the most popular. Yep. Thing. Yeah, yeah. This is it. And then I'll say pass on the buffalo. Yep. Dude, that's a thing. I'm more of like a chicken cutlet, no buffalo Ooh. chicken. Just same like with him. Lettuce, tomatoes, onions. Frank, pots, we gotta go out stuff. to eat together. Yeah. We are, there's a lot lined up here. Uh, I didn't realize cheeseburger grinder and like uh steak tips big yeah, yeah. time like massachusetts oh, new yeah, england stuff huge. Yep. yeah it's really big it's it's i didn't realize it wasn't anywhere else yep was that that was the uh, that was why i was so hard to stay in shape growing up right oh yeah i mean like yeah. <laughs> go to the pizza place and get a slice and a chocolate milk and 20 <laughs> and, and 20 bucks yeah, yeah 20, 20 bucks, bucks. <laughs> 20 bucks back in the day used to last you a whole oh, week my oh god, my god that would get me lunch every day for the rest of the week yep um okay so your last one this one's going to be characters from entertainment stuff yeah. i know that oh, you love okay ari gold from entourage Jordan Belfort from The Wolf of Wall Street, or The Grinch from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Oh. Ari Gold score. That's my favorite show, my favorite character. It's the yep. best. I would say, uh, who's the other one? It's The Grinch and who else? And Jordan Wolf Belfort. Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. Which is tough. I would say Grinch for sure because that's my comparable. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, pass on uh, Jordan Belfort. Okay. So I've got a lot of follow-ups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Are you the Grinch? What's the Do you deal? not like Christmas? Everyone says I'm grumpy, but I think I'm pretty happy. Right, Sammy? I'm pretty happy all the time. <laughs> I think so, okay, too. Okay. All right, so it's not a Christmas thing. It's more of a grumpy thing. Yeah. All yeah. right, I feel like Scrooge would be a better well, actually, nickname. Him and Stromer played heads up. And you remember that? Yeah, yeah. He gets Scrooge, and Stromer goes, uh, 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 you, you at get? Christmas. And, and Frankie goes, Grinch? And he's like, no. And then he pulls up the next one, and it is the Grinch. And he's yeah. like, you at Christmas? Yeah. And he's like, the Grinch? <laughs> I was like, oh, it's amazing. What the hell is going on here? I feel like you're not grumpy at all. No, I, I feel like What, what do you think? You do something. Like, what do you think you do that makes everybody say that? Because if you get called the horse enough times, you go get it fit, fitted for a saddle. You know, like, so, enough people calling you the Practice Grinch. Practice my sense of humor. It's like dry, and then I complain about a lot of things that, you, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? The little things. I yeah. complain about a lot of stuff too. I can relate yeah. to that. That's all part of my sense of humor. It's just 
complaint. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like it. All right. And is there anything better than Gary Busey and Entourage? No. <laughs> It's like <laughs> those great. are truly the funniest episodes of all oh, time. Okay. That show is unbelievable. It's great. It's I've watched it probably. It was actually so. That's the show I usually have on before bed. Oh, still. Yeah, I've watched yeah. it like fifteen Same. times. Same. So big we, time. My wife just finished it probably like two months ago. I'm like, we're watching Full House right now. Yeah. And like, what, a, like, what a swing, what, dude! Like what a transition. Episodes in. <laughs> I'm like, you, want, you think it's time for Entourage? Again? Yeah, yeah. That's another great crossover when Saget's and Entourage. Oh, yeah, there you go. Nice. I always go watch Entourage completely and then watch the movie every time. Yep, yep. Yeah. Do you have a favorite episode? Vegas comes to mind. Put on the spot right now. I'm um, to think. I'm one day in the valley is great. One day in the va- when Aquaman comes Tree out. Tree Trippers is great. Too. I like yeah. that. Yes, oh, Chuck Liddell. Great yes. one, Sammy. You got great got episode. You got got. You got got. Polly Shore, the Playboy no, Mansion episode one. is I'm great. Yeah, we literally go to Joshua Tree with a huge group because of the Tree Tripper yeah, episode. It's great. It's yeah, and well, it's actually yeah. the Tree Trip one's like actually like one of my least favorite episodes. Why? Because really? it's Cause gives you anxiety. Because Vince, so Vince almost does pension. It, it gives me anxiety too. But <laughs> it it's is, just like uh, so slow. It is. Yeah, that's um, actually fair. Holy, this is so tough. First of all, that show drives me insane sometimes. Like Vinny Chase drives me insane. In that show. Because because so just, the just latter the end, passes he makes on some of these movies, yeah. like man, just go make your movie. bad decision maker. Bad decision. Bad maker. decision maker. And he's, he, he's and always like, he drives, me, he drives me insane. Yeah. Do you know what we Drama out? keeps me going and Turtle just keeps me. Going. Yeah. Uh, yes, completely agree. That show is about E. It's not about Vince. When you really think about it. Yeah, it's you're like, right. It's like yeah, if you go back and watch the first season, like it's about. I'm gonna e. watch it that perspective. Yes, dude, it's do cool. it, dude. Because you're due for a rewatch. So we got to get off Full House. No, the be- I think that when uh, Vince goes by his Rolls Royce, sick episode. Oh my god! And then like, it later. Jack, like, all these jerk offs trying to have 911s in this town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Marvin, Marvin calls and he's like, "I just told you to save money. You buy a fucking Rolls Royce." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they start smoking weed in it immediately. Yeah. Like, god, I just wish I wish they had left Turtle be turtle like yeah. they tried they needed they felt like they needed to do too much yeah. with turtle like have him make some of them keep turtle fat and being a driver Keep him fat yeah that's sure. what i needed yeah. for sure um all right well frank we've taken up enough of your time you got dirty diapers to change yeah, yeah. 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 that's true but this has been an absolute blast before we let you go is there anything you want to shout out or plug i plugged out the vans that are releasing on sunday yes yep. so we are going to fans. make frank vetrano the first nhl buy those vans and i'm ambassador. looking for more shoes in the future yes, yes. there we go we're gonna get you a shoe deal that's the that's the shoes, that's though. the end yeah. of the game here. Exactly. Yeah, beautiful. All right. Well, Frank, thank you so much, dude. This has been a blast, and um, we'll catch you next time. Dude. Sounds good, man. We're gonna get Thanks you down guys. to L.A. Yeah. Perfect. There you Venice go. Venice Beach. Yes. <laughs>